Well, good morning, TPF. How are y'all today? Man, y'all still sound like y'all are out camping and loud. But I bet you I know what you're cheering for. How about them diamond hogs? Man, I tell you, we play tonight at 8 o'clock. If when we win, you know, we'll advance to the next round. So I said win because I'm, I'm speaking in faith, right? Number one team in college baseball. Not sure if the OU people know anything about that right now. I just, I just had to throw that. That was funny to me. I just had to throw that in there, Cameron. Get off the stage. Uh-oh. They're going to start throwing stuff at me. Too bad we're not in a comedy club. But this is God's comedy club. We can have fun up in here, right? I just thought about that. That's, that's, I say party for Jesus all the time. So as everyone come on in, we're going we're gonna to get this party started. We're going we're gonna to have fun up in this club today. How about that? Our, we got a new comedian to come on the stage. I think his name is Dwayne Jiggers. So he's going to be our comedian today. So when he, comes, when he comes up this morning, we should all just give him a standing ovation. Maybe we should wait till he's done. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to our Facebook Live. If this is your first time, welcome to TPF. I know we made you feel welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. When you walk through the doors, you're at home. Amen. This is home because we can come in here and we can have fun. We can have fun and we can be serious. But the most of all is we're doing it for the Lord. Amen. All right. So we're going, to do one, we're going to do one thing as Cameron makes his way up. He's going to pray for us. So I want everyone to look at your neighbor and say, be careful how you treat me. Look at your other, look at your other neighbor and say, because God is fighting for me. Hello, somebody. Y'all better watch out. Cameron, come on up. Let's pray. We're going to have fun up in TPF Club for Jesus today. I like that name. How about that? Be glad I love you, man. Okay, I'll give it to you, Hog fans. Baseball. It's baseball. Oh, by the way, for all you OU fans, the women are be playing in the World College World Series today. If you want to watch that, they're ranked number one in the country as well. So we'll see how it ends up today. Won't we? And then football season just around this corner for you all, you Razorback fans. No, I didn't think so. Anyway, um, are you all ready to praise and get excited about God? Not the hogs, but I'm talking about God, right? Okay. So let's all stand this morning. I think this is going to be a great day. Um, God's got lots of things in store for this church and for each and every person in here. And um, I think it's time that we start seeking for what we need. Because all those miracles, all those blessings are out there for us. They're just waiting for us. God said, I'm just waiting on you. And so... Let's pray this morning that those miracles and those blessings fall through, right? come right through the ceiling this morning, right? Along with that anointing and the Holy Spirit just touching people's lives, changing us from the inside out. Amen. Amen. So let's pray this morning and ask God to enter into this building right now. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father. Lord, as we come to you in prayer this morning, Father, Lord, we just thank you. We praise you. We glorify you, Father, for everything that you have done for us. We thank you, Lord, for your son who died on that cross for us, that he shed his blood for us. He took those stripes for us. Lord, all for us. And Lord, we receive the healing in our bodies this morning. If you have sickness this morning, you reach out and take that healing this morning in your body. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the blessings being poured out, Father, because prosperity is, is for us. And, Lord, we'll take that, too. And, Father, we thank you this morning, Father, for your anointing upon this service, upon each and every person that walked through this door this morning. Father, let those healing touches to take place today. And, Father, we thank you for your word, because that word is what builds us up. 
That word is what encourages us. That word is what gives us victory, Father, in our own lives. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for that word this morning. And Father, I thank you for blessing this church, blessing this praise team, Father, Lord, as we enter in this morning into praise and worship. Lord, let your blessings flow. Let the victory come in. Father, and we thank you and we praise you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Yeah. Are we ready to praise God this morning? Come on, let me hear you. Amen. Amen.
Sing a little louder. 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 In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder.
Come on, come on and give him a praise in this place. Come on, come on and give him a praise in this place. Come on, keep singing it. Come on, we exalt him today, amen. We exalt him today. There's no one, no one. Can you really say that personally today? There's no one like my God. Come on, make it personal. I will. Not my neighbor, but I will. The Bible says, praise God in his sanctuary. That's biblical. That ain't, that ain't nothing else but biblical. How many believe we're in his sanctuary? Well, the other half of you, welcome to the sanctuary. How many believe we're in his sanctuary? The Bible says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp. 
Praise him with the timbrel, with the tambourine. Praise him with the dance. Praise him with strings as we you see today. Praise him with the pipes. Praise him with the keyboard. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. And praise him upon resounding cymbals. And the last thing he says is let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. If you're breathing, if you're breathing, you have a requirement. You have it from God. I didn't write it, write it. The Bible said it. He said, if you have breath, I mean, if these guys, you guys just stop a minute. Just stop. Just stop. Just for, you say, why'd you do that? Watch. Just hold everything. Just stop. Silent. Do you hear him praise? Do you hear him praise? Do you hear any praise? I don't hear nothing. It's just nothing. It's just dead, right? No praise. The Bible says to praise him with the instruments. Praise him with that. He said, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. I, I, I'm still trying to figure out what it would sound like if everything that had breath would praise the Lord. I know what it sounds like with instruments. I understand what instruments sound like, but the Bible said, let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm just, I'm just more reserved. Until your ball game comes on. Until your favorite singer takes the stage. But I'm going to tell you something. The one and only God Almighty, creator of all, stepping in the heavens today, looking down at Turning Point Fellowship and saying, let everything that has breath. Come on, guys, hit it back. Come on, sorry. I hate to stop you, but listen at praise when it begins. Listen at it. Do you hear it rising? Do you hear it rising? It should be doing the same thing on the inside of you this morning. Your praise should begin to rise. Oh, I love you, Lord. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. Oh, I give you honor. We're only hearing instruments right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But here in just a minute, these guys are going to begin to open their mouth. And they're going to use words out of their mouth. See, praise. That's good. But there's something else that happens on the inside of me. When I open up my words. We tell, we tell our kids, use your words. We tell our kids, don't you point, use your words. So church, our Heavenly Father this morning has said, use your words. Come on, let's sing it out. Come on. I think we into something. Come on, let's sing. to say. Say those words right here.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just take a moment right now and just thank him today for everything he's done for you this week. And maybe, maybe this month, maybe in the past years, but give him some thanks today and tell him I thank you for keeping me. I thank you for protecting me. I, I thank you for loving me through that. I thank you for keeping me when I, I wasn't sure what path I was about to go. Thank you for showing me the path. Thank you this morning. Thank you this morning. Thank you today, God. We thank you for who you are, and we praise you. We give you glory. We give you the honor that you deserve today. And above all today, God, there's no one like you. Nobody like you, Jesus. And we do worship you in this place today. And we give you praise. We give you praise. Come on and give him some praise. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I wasn't, you may be seated in the house today. Goodness gracious, God's presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome to TPF. But to tell you one thing, welcome to the presence of God. It's home, that's right, Clay, it's home. I, uh, thank you, men. I, I was standing down here, and if you see me take my phone out, I wasn't texting anybody. I was, I was listening to a text, and it was coming from God, and the Holy Spirit was telling me, read these scriptures. And I just pulled it up on my phone. I had that Bible app. Pull it up on my phone real quick so I could just make sure I didn't miss any part of that to read to you. Now, I didn't know anything else. I was going, I stepped up here not knowing. But see, the Holy Spirit knew what we needed to hear this morning. We got to be reminded sometime of who we are in Christ. And that's what this, this series I started last week about being strong. And for the next few weeks, we're going to talk about the power of his might. And when you think of power, people think in one area, which I'll cover. But there's much power to be given. There's much of the Spirit to be given to give us power. I about preached my voice out just in the side, the side way. But I ain't going to preach it out. I'm preaching it in. Amen. And I want you to understand something today that as I get into this today, I think sometimes we got to be reminded who we really are. Who are we? Well, I'm Dwayne Driggers. No, who are we? Who are we? I'm a child of God. That's good. But who are we? I mean, I, well, I'm, I'm this. I'm, I'm, that's good. But who really are you? Individually, who are we? We can say, well, we're the body of Christ. Well, that takes me. Who am I in the body of Christ? What did God place me in the body of Christ for? If I am part of the body of Christ, what is my part of the body? Well, Pastor, if you if you let me sing, I didn't I ain't saying take a take on the stage. I'm not saying that. I'm saying this. Think about this. What is your part in the body? God God called you to serve. God called you to witness. God may have called you to speak. God may have called you to tell somebody. God may have done this. God, I mean, there's all kinds we go into, right? But God has called each and every one of us because all of us have a part in the body of Christ. There's not one of us that's left out of that body. If we are a born again believer in Jesus Christ and believe that Jesus died and he rose again and we've accepted him and we've accepted salvation, then we have a part in the body. That part, though, may not, you may have not thought about your part. But then there may have been a time you did think about your part. Sometimes we try to make our own part in the body. Well, I'm not called to do anything. I never found anything in the gifts. Nothing. I've never found it in the gifts. I've never found I don't do anything. I've never found that. Not in one gift did God say, you were created to do nothing. 
It's not in there. But he did say, I created you. And here are the gifts I am willing to give you. And here is the things I'm willing to offer you. And if I, as I said last week, you know, if we were up here offering you something in the physical, like a million dollars, then you guys would just do everything to be able to find out what, how I was giving that away. If I put a sign-up box and said, here, here's a sign-up box, put your name in there, and you could win, you could win that. Man, y'all be signing up for it. But I say, hey, sign this up right here. Look in your Bible and find out what your gift is. You'd be like, oh, no, that's good. But it's worth more. Somebody say it's worth more. Amen. It's worth more. It's eternal. Amen. The things you see are temporary, but the things you cannot see are eternal. Amen. They are eternal. Father, we love you today. And God, we're about ready to right now, Father, step into a time to receive for the future of TPF. God, we thank you for what you're doing at TPF. We thank you for the future of TPF. And God, as I say all the time, I, I, want, it, I want it tomorrow, but I wanted it yesterday. But God, it takes the time and it takes the steps and it takes the patience and it takes all these things that you give us, God, to walk through. And you help us walk through every step of the way. And Father, I ask you today, God, to bless this offering that we're about to receive. It's our first Sunday offering today, God, for the future. I ask you to bless it as you speak to hearts today. That, that boy, they say, God, Pastor, I'm ready for the future. I want to tell you something, God, today I love you so much and I thank you for providing and provision and for direction and for all those things you give us, God. But I'm asking today to touch a heart today in this room. I'm asking you to speak to a heart right now as they get ready to give, as they get ready to give to TPF Future, Father. Bless them today. Bless them. Bless each and every person in this room today. And thank you today for giving to the future. Amen. Thank you for giving to the future. We're going to receive that right now in this place. The future of TPF is, is bright. <laughs> Somebody tell your neighbor, TPF future is bright. And if you forgot your check and you don't have any cash, TPF, tpfgentry.com, and you can give online. Amen. We allow that too. But... Right now, today, those that remembered the first Sunday, many of you give second, third. Whenever you can do it, God bless you. Amen. We just, we began this, this first part of this year, and we just continue to do this. God's blessed this. God's blessed it over and over. Hadn't the camera? Just blessed it over and over this time, and we're so thankful. Our future is bright. Amen. And uh, a lot of people say, well, what's going on, Pastor? We're just kind of in delay. I don't know why I'm sharing this this morning. I've got a message I've got to preach. But I want to tell you this morning, we, 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 went, through, we went through a time and we're, going to, we're walking through it. And we have got a guy on, si on our side right now called Jesus Christ. Amen. But he has brought us somebody. And not, these men know they're in here. He's brought us a guy that's, that's going to save us already $12,000. You say, that's, that's a lot of money. But it was a lot of money when you just need plans. But he's also going to help us build our site plan, which is saving us over $20,000. Y'all ain't listening to me, amen? Why am I telling y'all that? Y'all don't need to know that. But I tell you that because I'm telling you, we, we, we are working, amen? It's slow process. But I, I, I always believe something, that delays are not bad things. And I want the building like yesterday, amen? I do, and I know some of you do, and some of you have questions. Why should I keep giving the future? We ain't seeing nothing. I'm going to tell you something. It's going to take money to get where we got to go. You got to have down payments. You got to have all those things, amen? But I'm telling you, God's already got, got it. He said he supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. As one pastor said, he stepped in his pulpit and he said, you know what, folks? He said, we got enough money to build debt free. Amen. And everybody said, amen. And he said, because it's in your pockets. Amen. 
That's just a little free one for you, amen. But I tell you that because, man, we seeing things move. I believe God's going to get those, those prices back down on those buildings and wood. And some of y'all in here say, well, it's never going to come down. Shut up, devil, amen. <laughs> Shut up, devil. It's coming down in the name of Jesus, amen. It's coming down. Walls are coming down, and walls are going to go up, amen. The walls of wood, walls of metal building going down. If you say it's not, don't talk to me. It's going down. I believe God's word, and I believe he's going to take care of us, amen, to the fullness. And uh, just wanted to share a little bit with you where we are, some of the savings that, we're, that God's already providing, and uh, such a blessing how God is taking care of us, amen. And so what you can't see with your eye, know it's going on with everything else, amen. How many love Jesus with all your heart today? Come on, amen. Give him a praise. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to step into the second part of this today. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, Christy, today. And um, we just want to step in very strong to this. I'll try to teach, preach. You know me. I don't know what I'm going to do. It'll just happen. Amen. So Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 10. This is where I built this whole series from. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. And uh, a lot of people just move on in this, in this passage. Talk about the armor of God. It talks about all the armor of God. The things that you and I need in spiritual warfare. And the things that we need to concentrate on in our life. But as we look at the second part of this. He said in the power of his might. Many of us in here today. As we take and we open these word up. Many times we... We, we try to put everything on God. We put everything on God. I want you to hear that one more time. We put everything on God. How many has ever said, well, God, if you show up, things will happen? Well, God shows up because he's in you. Anyway, you'll get it in a little bit. Stay with me. Romans, the 8th chapter, I want to read you a few verses today. Read you just a few verses. And Romans, the 8th chapter, verse 1. Therefore, there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to what? For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ is, Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do. In that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin condemn sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in who? In who? Uh, Thank you. Who walk not after the flesh. Say this with me. I don't walk after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And you say, Pastor, you just made me lie. So I'm going to have you confess it. It's not a lie. You're going to confess that you're going to walk after the, the Spirit and not the flesh. Come on, Amen. So let's look at it. I don't want to lose this. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I get preaching for I need to read. Amen. I need to finish this. And so he said here, for they are, they are after the flesh. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. So if you're in here and you're after the things of the flesh, you are after. The, the very thing is your mind is only set on the things of the flesh. But he, but he goes on. He says, but wait a minute. But they that are after the spirit. How many is after the spirit? For they that are after the Spirit, they will be mindful of the things of the Spirit. For to be carnal minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. See, we, we, we don't like this verse. We want to somehow remove that. Well, I'm going to tell you, you can't remove this word. So, so those who are just in the flesh 
You cannot please God just in the flesh. But you are not in the flesh. Say, I'm not in the flesh. But in the spirit. If we be that, the spirit of God dwells in who? In you, in me. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus. Don't, don't you be shouting on me yet. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in ye, in me, I'm going to make it right, in me, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to my mortal body that through his spirit who dwells in me. How many thankful for the word? Amen. Oh, yeah, there's some of you. Amen. How many thankful for the word of God today? Amen. Father, we love you. Bless it today. Bless your word. God, this word's already anointed. Help me, your, your, your vessel today, to speak the things you'd have me to speak. Say the things you'd have me to say. Help me teach. Help me preach this very word that you have laid in my heart. That it encourages every person in this room today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 40, 29. He who gives power to the weak and those who have no might. He increases strength. The power of God, this is where we're going to talk today, is about the power of God. The power of God is not like a coat. You cannot put it on and take it off whenever you feel like it. It is the very thing that should be living in you today if you are a born again believer. I know you you're want me to teach you quickly, but I'm going to teach you slowly so you can see this. The question is today that I have for me, for you, for all of us at TPF today, what have we done with the power of God? What have we done with the power of God? We have, we have literally taken this thing called the power of God and said it's not for me. If we can't fleshly get it in our minds we turn it off Amen. second timothy 3 5 says it like this having a form of godliness i go to church on sundays i go to church on wednesdays i even dress up every now and then i got i, I remember when i was five and got baptized and since you've done what with it? Well, I got saved. And when I got saved, Jesus come into my heart more than Jesus came in. Amen. Because we got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? Amen. We have this working on the inside of us. And he said here, he said, you got a form of godliness, but you're denying its power. You say you know Jesus, but you ain't operating like Jesus. You say you know the Holy Spirit, you ain't operating like he lives in you. Come on, amen. See, we operate in the flesh very good, but we don't like to move into that spirit side because that spirit side means that I have to start operating in power and authority and anointing, and then I have to start operating as the Holy Spirit says, just like this morning when I got a text from heaven and the Holy Spirit said, hey, Driggers, read that passage of Scripture out of Psalm 150. Well, if I hadn't been reading my Bible ever, then I wouldn't know where Psalm 150 was. I wouldn't even know that was in the Bible. But see, when you've been in the Word and you know the Word and you you hear the word and you hear the spirit the spirit will lead you guide you teach you show you the way and give you all kinds of stuff i, I want to tell you this morning the holy spirit desires to work in us not just live in us we don't, we like having the holy spirit in there when we need him like i need your comfort we love using him for that we like using him for when we need taught something but what about power he come to give us power amen you say, I hope you got scripture. Oh, I do. Power, I'm going to explain to you what power is. Power is the ability 
to do or act and the capability of doing or accomplishing something. That's power. If I walk over here and I look at that plug-in and I just stare at it and I hold a cord in my hand and I go, why ain't this working? I have the cord that it says that this thing is electric and it is not working. And I'm holding the other end of the device in this hand, but I'm looking at what I need to be plugged into, but I choose just to stand there and say it ain't working. That's operating in the flesh. But if I walk over and I plug it in, somebody say, plug it in, plug it in. Yeah, okay. Plug it in, and when you plug it in, there's something that begins to take place. There's something that I didn't feel it. I didn't have anything happen to me. But when I plugged in that cord, something went through that cord all the way into where it needs to do the connection of the device that's connected. And all of a sudden, uh, the very device that I needed power for comes on. Well, let me help you today. When you get plugged into Jesus and you get plugged into the Holy Spirit, uh, there's a power source that you may not feel, but it comes through the line uh, right to where it needs uh, and gives you everything that you need. Everything that you need if you're plugged into the power source. It's so easy, though, just to live and feel powerless. See, we're aware of our shortcomings anybody aware of your shortcomings if not ask your neighbor <laughs> ask somebody you work with they'll help you with your shortcomings I put my glasses on so I can really see y'all amen but I want you to understand today that the inadequacy that we are we're very inadequate we're very we're in this place that we feel our shortcomings we think well I'm not good enough and most Christians you know might not be <laughs> I wasn't talking about y'all. That was that other church down the road. You know where it's at. Amen. But you understand this morning, some of us may not feel like we're the most powerful believer in this world. Amen. But I want to help you today because you know Jesus. and Because Jesus, who he is, he did something for us to give us all power. I'm going to help you. Listen to what the prophet Micah, that's in the Bible. It's Old Testament. It's called Micah, M-I-C-A-H. It ain't M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S. Oh, anyway. Somebody say Micah. Yeah, it's in the Bible. Watch this. The prophet Micah said he was living in a time when people were taking the name of the Lord but living any way they felt like. So like 2021, right? Watch Micah 3.8. But as for me, Somebody make a choice today. Say, as for me, me. I am filled with power, with the Spirit of the Lord, and with justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. I'm glad the day that I accepted Jesus. See, all of us in here are, if we have truly accepted Jesus, we have been filled with a power that we ain't tapped into. But Micah, the prophet, understood. This is Old Testament, folk, that he understood. See, the Holy Spirit didn't just show up in the early church on the day of Pentecostal, because that ain't what it said. Day of Pentecost is feast of festivals, feast of weeks. Go back in the Old Testament, find it. The Holy Spirit was there the day, the very first day that that everything was created. The Bible says that God moved, the Holy Spirit moved upon the waters. He did what God said, what God told him. He did. He moved upon the waters. I want to tell you, the Holy Spirit's been present since day one. It ain't about denomination. Please get that out of your head. And and, and I I grew up, I grew up wild. Y'all don't want to know that, amen. But I want to tell you something. I'm not talking about wild in the world. I'm talking about wild in the church, you know. People used to do crazy things. Come on, amen. Some of y'all in here, y'all been gone already, amen. I'm not talking about crazy Holy Spirit. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. He is real. He is part of the Trinity of God. Amen. He is 
is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit was given to all of us. Every one of us. You say, well, I don't speak in tongues. Well, I want to tell you something. Speaking in tongues is just a gift of the Spirit. But some of you need to work on the fruit of the tongue. We ain't got the fruit figured out because it's... Oh, hello. I post on my Facebook. I didn't get many likes for it. Amen. But I want to tell you something today. The gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not when you speak in tongues. I know it shocks many people when I say that. The Holy Spirit came way before there was ever a tongue. There is a gift of tongues. There is a gift of interpretation. There is gift of prophecy. You read your Bible. Unless you pull that part out of your Bible. I don't know. It's there. There's a whole chapter worth of gifts. And you can pull that part out and say, I don't want anything to do with it. And live in the flesh. The Bible says if you live according to the flesh, you cannot please God. You got to live according to the Spirit. What Spirit? The Holy Spirit. The Spirit that dwells in all of us. How many of the Holy Spirit dwelling in you today? Some of you need to get, and get a hold of our tongue. I'm glad the day that I accepted Jesus. How many glad the day you accepted Jesus? I'm glad the day I heard the gospel of Jesus Christ and somebody told me that Jesus loved me, that he forgave me. He didn't care what it was I did. He loved me and he wanted me to spend eternity with him. If I would only just believe that he died and rose again, I should be, I would be saved. Watch this. In Ephesians 1.13, you, a lot of people miss this, but I want to get it to you. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And when you believed, say, when I believed, when I believed. you were marked. I was marked with the seal, the promise of the Holy Spirit. You say, well, I'm, I'm Baptist. Well, I'm saved. I'm born again. That's a new church. Amen. Join the born again denomination. Well, I'm Methodist. I'm Presbyterian. I'm Catholic. I'm this. I'm that. I don't care what denomination you are. The Bible cannot change according to a denomination. It is what it says it is. And it will always be what it will be. Well, I'll never speak in tongues. That's correct. You will never do it. Well, I'll never prophesy. That's correct. You never will. Because the, the Holy Spirit is not going to come over and go, Come on, D. Come on, D. Come on, D. You know, after I do that, wild well, D probably hit me. He's being nice because I'm preaching right now. Come on, Mike. Come on. Come on. Get, come on. Come on. Use your tongue. <laughs> Speak something out of there. That's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is gentle. He is a person. He is part of the Trinity of God. He is gentle. He is a gentleman. He's going to come up to you and go, what do you desire? I desire to be a stronger witness. I'm glad you said that. Because the Bible says in the early church, in Acts, the Bible says that when they lay hands on them, when they laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came up on them and they began to speak with boldness. Not just tongues. Read the whole Bible. Amen. Don't read some of it. But if D goes, you know what? I desire the gift of tongues. And D comes up. He says, I desire the gift of tongues. And D steps up and tells, Holy Spirit, I desire. Not to show off. Not to just make noise. Not just for everybody else to see that I can speak in a tongue. But I want to do it for your glory. Oh, I was growing up in the church where Sister Sue gave a tongue every stinking Sunday night. Some of y'all didn't grow up in there. Amen. I did. And I, I'm just going to tell you that the Holy Spirit is not an author of confusion, but he's an author of peace. He will not do anything out of order or crazy. He'll do everything to order and flow correctly. And he will move upon people and they will experience the greatness of his power. 
How many want to experience the greatness of his power? Come on, amen. I just lost half of you. But I'll bring you back. Watch this. The Holy Spirit wants to be so much more in our lives than just be the seal of promise. We have a helper. The Bible says we have a helper. We have, I'm going to prove it all through the Bible. Jesus said it. I didn't say it. Jesus said it. Stay with me. If Jesus said it, do you believe it? Amen. See, if pastor says it, you question it. But if the Bible and Jesus said it, you got to believe it. If you believe in the same Jesus I do. Come on. Amen. We have a helper. We have a teacher. We have an operator of gifts. And we have power only if we desire him. If we truly understand and believe what the Bible tells us about who we have living in us. All that comes against us. Everything that comes against us. We wouldn't allow fear to come up. If we knew who we had living in us. For God. 2 Timothy 1 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. But of what? What kind of spirit of what? And of love and of a sound mind. We'll get into that some other day. But power. Watch that. But a power. That's the spirit he's given you. A power. He hasn't given you a spirit of fear. He's given you a spirit of power. Well, do you know what's going on all around us, Pastor? Do you understand? What, oh, my goodness. Huh? Them helicopters come through on Lake Ten Killer down low. And everybody was watching for the machine gun. I was behind a tree. I was good. I was actually on the phone, standing in his tree right there watching. These helicopters flew real low at camp, at camp and there were people like Agar was like, man, I didn't know what was going to happen. They come in there fast. I want to tell you, that's how the enemy comes in. He comes in fast. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, if you ain't ready, and you ain't working in power, but you're working in fear, he will take you out. I got to ask you something. What would you do if Jesus... If I could invite Jesus in right now to stand behind this pulpit and tell you the same thing I did. How would you act if you could link his arm and yours and told you that from now on he's going to be physically present. He would tell you every situation is going to be all right. When you become sick He's going to lay his hand on you and you're going to be healed. If you ran out of money, he said, I'll provide it. How about if he'd pray and multiply your resources? If you encountered a problem, remember, you're linked with Jesus. If you encountered a problem and you didn't know how to handle it, he'd tell you exactly what to do. How many would like this? Come here, guys. I done picked on you once. You might as well go ahead and join in with me. Come here, Jesus. Come here, Jesus. Come here, God. Yeah, that's you, Mike. I know you've never been called God. I know Christy calls you Lord, but just... Stand right here by D. We're going to put D in there. Yeah, there y'all go. They all look cute. We're not representing anything else either. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They real. We look at them as some, but they're real. God is real. How many believe in God? A very convincing God, was it? How many believe in God? I mean, believe Jesus. God sent Jesus to die for all of our sins. But then Jesus said, wait a minute, I got something to do. I got three and a half years to do this. And I can't leave these people all alone. So, you know what? I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit. And me, I get to link an arm with the Holy Spirit. Because he lives in me. He lives in me. So when I'm up against something and I don't understand what's going on, I hear the Holy Spirit say it's going to be all right. And you know where it came from? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit dwelling in me to tell me it's going to be all right. Wow. 
He's my peacemaker. He, he, when, I, when I'm troubled, when I'm sick, when I'm down and out, when I ain't got nothing else to do, Holy Spirit's over going, Driggers, it's going to be all right. See, he knows me well enough to call me Driggers. <laughs> Amen. And the Holy Spirit says, it's going to be all right. And it's up to me to get rid of the spirit of fear and accept the spirit of power. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of power. Somebody say spirit of power. How many want to walk link arm in arm with the Trinity? Do you want to walk with them? I got news for you. If you're born again, he lives in you right now. Thank you, men. Thank you, men. He dwells in you. Give him a hand. Come on. He dwells in you right now. He dwells in you. And if he's dwelling in you, watch this. Somebody says, well, I, I haven't felt nothing. The Holy Spirit, nothing. Well, you don't have Jesus standing next to you because your flesh is taking care of everything. You are providing for you. But it's the Holy Spirit that said he would be your helper, your guide, your teacher, your provision. Come on, are y'all with me? Listen to what Jesus said. I'm giving Jesus words here in just a minute. Now, if you, how many believe in Jesus? If you believe Jesus, watch what he says. But you do have something better to say. Jesus said to himself, that's right. In the hours before Jesus was crucified, he told his disciples that he would be leaving them. And returning to his father. I, I represented it. God, the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Watch this. He said, when they expressed their sorrow and dismay, Jesus said these words in multiple scriptures. Watch this. John 14, 16 through 17. He said, I pray the Father and he will give you another helper. That he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. I want to tell you something. If you're in the flesh and you're still living like the world, you're going to have a hard time understanding what I'm telling you. Whom the world cannot receive. They cannot get it because they've not been born again. Somebody say, I've been born again. Amen. Because it never sees him. See, the world cannot see him, nor do they know him, but you know him, for he dwells with you, and he will be, he will be what? Make it personal. He'll be. John 15, 26, but when the helper or the comforter comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. You think you're the one testifying, but it's the Holy Spirit testifying through you of the Father. John 16, verse 7 through 15. Jesus said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the comforter, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. How many's glad there was a day he convicted you of your sin? Amen. Hallelujah. And of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, Jesus said. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. That's how I feel this morning. However, when he, everybody say he, he. that's a person. He, the spirit of truth, has come. He will guide you into all truth. Not something I've been taught since I was five, but to all truth. For he will not speak on his own own authority see the Holy Spirit ain't going to step out of place he's going to step into the authority of God Jesus and then speak through you and I but whatever he hears whatever the Holy Spirit is hearing uh, he will speak uh, and he will tell you things to come 
He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. And all things that the Father has are Therefore I said that he who, the Holy Spirit, will take a mind and declare it to you. Oh, but it don't stop there. In Luke 24, again, Jesus said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father. I hope y'all can see Mike and Dee and Mike up here. It's funny I brought two mics up. Should have brought another mic up. Where y'all at? (laughs) But watch this. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Then you go over to Acts, the first chapter, and verse 8. And it says, but you shall receive power when the who, what? Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be what of mine, tongue talkers? No, witnesses. Witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Now, we know that the Bible says, I heard a guy say this one time, if you read where the tongues came, it's not weird, uh, weird out. Everybody knew everybody's language. I heard a guy share it like this, and then he was a Baptist boy. Well, I want to tell you how he said it. I like how he said it. He said, you ever been to Los Angeles Airport, Jeremiah? What's it like there? Air all kinds of languages. There's every language you can get. There's one over here language. There's a language over there. There's a language here. There's a language over there. And if I was... One that could understand that person, I would understand their language. What was happening on the day of Pentecost is that we had one language and another language and another language. And all the people had come together for a big festival. And all of them from a different race, from a different idea. And they came together in unity. And when the Spirit came upon them, they began to speak with a tongue that wasn't their own language. It'd be like me. The only Spanish I got is taco. Burrito. Enchilada. I knew it'd come. Fajitas. With tortillas. So, so, so I can't ever do that one. Sofa. Pia. It makes me want to go down to the bathroom or something. You say, that's the only Spanish I know. But I guarantee if I started speaking in a Spanish language up here and D over here could understand Spanish, he'd be like, man, that dude's talking directly in Spanish. i give you an illustration. My cousins went to Mexico and they were missionaries over there in a very, very deep part of Mexico. And they didn't speak any English and they were just learning the Spanish language. And they were there in a service and the Holy Spirit began to speak in an unknown tongue that they thought was unknown. But when they began to speak, that person that was speaking knew no English, was not trained in any English, didn't know anything about English. But my cousins knew everything in English, and they experienced for the first time what it was like to see the Holy Spirit truly work. Come on. Come on. Are y'all with me? Truly work. The Holy Spirit is like right there. And he ain't weird. He's a cool guy. You say, why are you calling him God? He's a person. See, when we say Holy Spirit, everybody gets weird if I said that was holy. And I, and I heard a guy say this, and I was sharing with this. But I, the thing is, is if I said that's Holy D. Y'all wouldn't think D's weird. Holy, holy Mike. <laughs> Only Clay would, D. <laughs> holy Mike. We say holy moly all the time. Nobody thinks anything about it. Some of you say holy something else you shouldn't say. Have you ever seen anybody cuss the devil? You hear, you hear God's name in vain all the time. Why don't they use the devil's name in vain? He's the, he's the killer. Come on. Amen. Oh, some of you on here. I got to get back. Got to wind this down. Watch this. The Holy Spirit is in each and every one of you been saved. Now, how he operates is many different ways. He don't just operate in a tongue. 
He operates as a helper. He operates as a guide. He operates as a comforter over here. He operates in the very truth of everything in your life. Come on, amen. Well, I, I, I got to get to this. Acts 2, 38, 39. I got till 2 o'clock today. Let's do this. Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 39, we don't ever read. For the promise is to you, to your children, and to all that are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. It's been years since Jesus said this, and most of us are still struggling to believe it. Believe that the Holy Spirit actually lives in us. The day you got saved, he came in. And what you do with him, I asked you in the beginning, where's the power? Where's your power? He lives in you. You have the power living in you. And he has given us power. Every time we see God's power in manifestation, you can be sure the Holy Spirit's going to be on the scene. The Holy Spirit dwells within you and he walks within you. And he doesn't change his ability so he could fit them inside of you he is everything in you he has been he is the same awesome ability he's the same awesome ability with power and with gifts what's more when you and I run into something we can't handle with but to call on our helper called the Holy Spirit come on amen I showed you what it would be like to be linked with them all the time you are linked with them all the time Well, he hasn't helped me before. He's been waiting for you to give him an invite to help. Well, I ain't got no gifts. He's been waiting for an invitation of the desire of the gift you desire. Well, he's never done anything for me because he's never had an invitation to do more than you can control. That's operating in the flesh when you control it. As long as you can control it, it's okay. But when it gets a little out of control or the helper is doing something for you, you're not sure about it because you are not in control. I want to tell you something. Control is a problem. It's a problem. Watch. Oh, i got to hurry. My goodness, y'all been wasting my time. Where is it at? But remember, he's your helper. If you're walking around talking doubt, unbelief, and worthless junk, God and the Holy Spirit is limited. He'll wait quietly for you to open the door for him to work. He's not going to shove the door open. He's not going to do anything like that. So I want you right now to decide to start opening the door. Everybody do this. That's what you need to do. Develop an awareness of the reality of the Holy Spirit within you. Stop spending all your time meditating on problems that you're facing and start spending time meditating on the power that lives in you. What does I say? In other words, stop becoming more God inside minded but speaking the word of faith. Start speaking the word and faith in Jesus name. Come on, amen. Do you know what would happen if we would do this? All of heaven would break loose in our life. You know, people say all the time, well, all the blank has broken out in my life. You said, you said blank, you were thinking it. Well, you say it, so what's the difference? Boy, it's good and quiet in here. I must hit something there. We use hell like it's something, nothing that's real. But hell is real. And when people say that, I say, you ain't even seen hell break loose. We had all this break loose in my life. You have never seen that break loose in your life. Hell is a very tormenting place. It's a place where they beg. They will beg and plead for something to drink. <laughs> and it's not coming. I want heaven to break loose in my life. Come on. How many want heaven to break loose in your life? Instead of sitting around wishing there was something you could do for that sick person or unsaved neighbor, 
You march into that house. You tell them about Jesus. Lay hands on them and expect the Holy Spirit within you to release God's power. Come on, amen. Cause him to recover. Well, I prayed for my loved one and, and they, they just didn't make it. I just don't know what I did wrong. I want to tell you something. You did nothing wrong. You step in that power. You stay walking in faith and, and, and you stay strong in God. Hey, I've got love. I have, I've got all kinds. I can give you all kinds of stories. I ain't got time for it. But I tell you this one thing. Quit using excuses why your power's not working. Because you didn't see it once. That tells God he's not working. I want to tell you he's at work and they are in heaven and they are rejoicing. Joycina, and you and I got to get there. Come on, amen. Quit living out here going, well, if they would have just been there. No, you may not be right here right now. That very moment, God, they are rejoicing in heaven. Amen. amen. I would love to see. I love to see miracles. And I've seen some miracles. I've seen God heal. I've seen people die. I, I could go through a list of things. What, what, well, it's this or that. But I'm going to tell you, most people at a point, sooner or later, and I'm, I'm just going to say it because it, it's what it is. But I could stand up here and go, Mike, you're going to be good. You're going to be fine. You're going to make it. You are there. I got faith to believe. And Mike's over here going, I think I'm dying. <laughs> I'm probably going to die tonight. His doubt is going to outweigh my faith here. He's got to have the same faith I do. Come on, amen. Y'all ain't listening to me in this building. Come on. Somebody say, Lord, help us. Amen. Why does he take some? Why does he heal? I don't have all the answers, but I know one answer is called Jesus. And I got another answer called the Holy Spirit that says we got the power to stand against anything. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know what? He's a comforter too in them times. Amen. Man, oh, I don't know where I'm at. I got to, I don't know my notes. I'm lost. I'm just going, I'm going into this. Y'all ready? Praise team, come on back. I don't know where I'm at. So forget them notes. Forget those notes. Let's look at this next passage of scripture I got. Something I've wrote here. Most surely I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also in greater works than these. He will do because I go to my father. There was one other passage I want to get to though. 1 Corinthians 3.16. He said, don't you know that you yourself are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? Watch 619. Do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit? Say, my temple is a temple of the Holy Spirit. I want to ask you something. How clean is that temple today? Who is in you? The Holy Spirit. Whom you've received from God. And you are not your own I wish we could get this you are not your own if the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead dwells in me this is the part I wanted, wanted to get to I'm going all the way to the end of my message I have no idea how many notes I missed but the Holy Spirit knows where I'm at Ephesians 3.20 Ephesians 3.20 now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in. Somebody help me. According to the power that works in. Well, I heard somebody say it. According to the power that works in. I'm going to prove it by Bible that it's biblical. Watch. Acts the third chapter, verse 4 through 10. He fixed his eyes on him with John and Peter. Look at us, they said. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive money and alms and something from them. And Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand. He took him by the right hand. He took him by the right hand. And he lifted him up. And immediately, his feet and his ankle bones Receive strength. So he began to leap. He began.
get to stand and walk. It's been years since child. He hadn't done any of this. And he entered into the temple. They were all reserved like TPF today. Oh, I'm fixing to get crazy. He come walking into the temple. My mic works back here too. He come walking into the temple. Just a normal day at TPF. But he come through the door. Oh, look what God did for me. Do you see what God did for me? He can do for you. You see what he did? Look at this. He did it for me. He can do it for you. He did it for me. He can do it for you. He did it for me. He can do it for you. He's leaping. He's running. And all the people are going, what is it? That's the man at the gate called beautiful. He ain't supposed to be walking. He sure ain't supposed to be leaping. And he was praising God. He was praising God. And I want to teach you something today. There wasn't one prayer that said, God, heal this man. It was the power that these men knew that the Holy Spirit was in them. And they had the power, the same power, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. They said, this man ain't nothing different. Ah, Peter said, I experienced something. I got a hold of some power. I've been plugged in. Yes, sir. I got to get it down this. Oh, Jesus. I've been plugged in. And he said, I've watched Jesus operate like this. Rise up and walk. Take your bed and walk. You say, you got a preacher sound going on. I'll say it in your tone. He said, rise up and walk. Take your bed and walk. Be healed. Be this. Come on. Be set free. Be delivered. Let go of those things in your life. That's keeping you bound. And let the Holy Spirit begin to move on you this morning. It may be you coming down the aisle. Well, I ain't uh, running down an aisle. Hey, if you got what that man got, you'd be running too. Some of you got a hold of something today you got saved. And you hadn't used that power since. You ain't even used that praise since. The day you got saved. Mm. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Holy Spirit. I don't know. You know what? We're living in a day right now when the natural world has more power than we do. Do you hear me? The natural world looks like it's got more power than we do. And that should not be because, what's that? It does not have more power. There's no greater power than the Holy Spirit. Come on, are you listening to me? People say, well, Satan's got this power. No, he don't. No, he don't. Jesus has the power. And he said, I put it inside of you, Dean. I put it inside of you. I put it inside of you, Jeremiah. I put it inside of you, Donaldson. I put it inside of you. I put the power in you. Now, what do you do with the power? Well, I'm at church. I got my power. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, Jesus. I feel you, Lord. Yes, God. I got my power coat on. We walk outside. We live according to what the world says. I don't live according to what this world says. I live according to what this word says. As I preach a long time ago, if you get the, get the L out of world, you'll get the word inside of you. Amen. You need to get that. And some of y'all went to Oklahoma school. Hang on a second. The Arkansas people got it. These Oklahoma, I got to help them. W-O-R-L-D. 
you take the L out, squeeze the D in, and it spells W-O-R-D. Oh, somebody in here, tell me the word works in this place. Amen. How many need freedom today? How many need to be free from something? You got the power. Come on, you got the power. I got the power. You got the power. Walk in that power today. Walk up here today and say, God, I desire this gift. God, I desire to walk in your gifts. I desire to walk in this. I desire to walk in that. God, I desire this gift in my life. I desire this. God, I'm speaking over my life. I'm, I'm believing healing in my body. I'm believing today, God. So I'm going to ask you one more time. What is it you desire? Do you desire more of the world? I'm going to tell you something. I was at camp, and there were some spirits up the way from our party. We, we're, we're crying because it's 12.06. It's because you ain't got the Holy Spirit working in you. I'm going to tell you, at 2.30 in the morning, they were still singing some Hank. And they wasn't going, Amazing grace. They wasn't doing anything slow. And they wasn't just like, they got a hold of some spirit. You look on every liquor store, it says spirits. That's, you know, here's your sign, baby. That's spirits. That's not God's spirit. See, what's wrong with the church is we in a hurry because we interrupting your party, your flesh, your stuff. I'm going to tell you something. If someone in here needs to be free, needs a miracle, needs God, there is no time limit to that. Amen? And I ask one more time, if you really desire the things of God, really desire some of the power of the Spirit to work in your life, man, I'd be the first one to hit the front and say, God, here am I. God, here am I. God, here am I. God, use me. If you don't use anybody else, these two men right here said, I don't care what the rest of them do. These guys said, I'm having a party. These folks here, I'm going to have a party. I'm going to have a party without you. Amen. I want to tell you something. If we get back, I know he says a party for Jesus. I know you would take that kind of, well, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't. I'm going to tell you something. We need to get back into some spirit of Jesus. Amen. Come on, Holy Spirit. Come on, Holy Spirit. Come on, Holy Spirit. Come on, Holy Spirit. Work in my life. Work in my life. Work in my life today, Holy Spirit. We need you. Holy Spirit, they need you up here. They need your power. They need your working power. His spirit is nothing, nothing, nothing but good. Nothing, nothing but good. If he puts the gift of tongues on you, then let it happen. If he puts the gift of prophecy on you, then prophesy. If he gives you the gift to, to, to just leap, then just leap. Amen. If he just gives you a gift to just be a witness, then be a witness and a good witness for him. What is it you need? What is it you need? Then receive it today. Hey, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm just here. You say you going to lay hands on me? Nope. Holy Spirit told me, don't do it. It's up to you guys. Y'all have to learn to open the door yourself. Watch this. We're going to sing. Here we go. We're going to invite him. Are you ready? Everybody in this building, help me invite him. Help me invite him in. Help me invite his presence. Help me invite up in this heart today. Come on. Up in this room. You're going to get it. Your presence, Lord. And I'll taste it and see of the sweetest of loves. When my heart becomes free and my shame is
Bowl sing it this morning. Come on. I'm going to do something this morning real quickly. I know, I, I know what it is. If you if you need healing right now in your body, would you hold your hand up? I just felt that this morning. There's healing in this room today. There's healing in this room today. Jesus has already done it. He can't do any more than what he's already done. He took every strut on his back for your healing. He said, you were healed. Now it's our place to receive it today. Amen. In the name of Jesus right now, I release that healing power. Come on, you need to receive it right now. I release that healing power. You know what I released? I released the Holy Spirit to come. And I'm asking right now, the, the Holy Spirit that's within you to rise up and you receive the healing that Jesus promised you that he promised you by his stripes you are healed start saying it right now whatever that sickness is say I am healed come on you say I feel a pain in my left shoulder say I'm healed you say I feel a pain still in my right leg I'm healed and tomorrow and today it can happen when you walk out of this building but say I am healed I am healed in the name of Jesus amen receive that healing today amen I felt that in this room today thank you Jesus for that healing touch God there's so many things here today but God as I promised you I would do I promised you this, God. That at the end of every service, I would give an invitation. And I will. Today, if you're in this room and you don't know Jesus or once knew about the Lord, maybe about Him, but never really gave your life, but today you'd like to say, you know what? I want to make things right. I want to rededicate my commitment to God. I want to walk with Him. I want to, I want to live in that power you talked about this morning, Pastor. I want Him to come into my life today. I invite Him in today. If you're here in this building, you say, ain't you going to have people close their eyes? No. Now, Jesus died for you in public. We're going to raise our hands in public. Amen. So if you're here today and you need Jesus to save you or you need to rededicate your life to God, would you lift your hand right now in this room? I see that hand. I see that hand back there. Amen. Thank you so much, God, today. Would y'all would y'all rejoice with me right now? Come on. Heaven's rejoicing right now. Somebody just made a choice. Somebody just made a choice today. And we're going to pray. Lord Jesus, we pray over this lady today as you, God, bring a fresh new dedication to her life. Restore, reset. And Father, give her a strength and a power, God, living in her 
that there's not an obstacle in life that she can't overcome. And right now, Father, I thank you for her being the honest one in this room to say, I need, I need to rededicate my life. I need to rededicate some things to God today. And God, I thank you today for this one. Because I know heaven is rejoicing today. I know heaven is rejoicing today. Come on. Let's rejoice one more time in this place in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to close with this today. Whatever you desire of the Spirit, the Spirit will do. You, you read the gifts. The Bible says to go after. The word covet kind of gets translated into some different measure of thought. But what you desire, go after that gift. We don't have people going and wanting to, wanting to have the gift of tongue and interpretation because it's been weirded out too much. But it's power. The gift of prophecy has been weirded out. Come on, amen. Anybody in this room understand what I'm saying? I'm not speaking something out of place. The Holy Spirit has been weirded out with people and we need to get the weirding out, out and get the good in and say, I know who he is, amen? Ain't nothing weird about him. He's a good guy. He's good. He's my God, amen? He's part of the Trinity. He's working in me, amen? He's working in my life. So today, one more time in this building, celebrate Jesus and say, I desire all that you have for me in Jesus' name. Come on, amen. Give him a praise. Thank you, Jesus. Tell that. That's a good, I like that story. Wayne was talking about the partying people down. By and it wasn't end. Brenda. <laughs> it was. Oh, I was partying all Yeah, I know. Day. I know. I know you were. You're, you're going to tell it. I know. It was a different party. Well, we were at one end of the camp and they were at the other end. Well, we had partiers right across from us. And we got tired of listening to the filthy news, uh, words and, and everything that was going on over there. So I walked over to the car and I turned on the stereo. We had Christian music in the a CD in the stereo. I turned that on and Amazing Grace come on. And I mean, we were just blaring that stereo. And these people got real quiet and got looking over there at our camp. And you know, after that, all the partying went on down at their end of the camp. And ours got a little bit quieter. <laughs> But they, we, we turned that in, and I mean, amazing grace just started blaring, and those people just got real quiet. Yeah. And we sit there, we played that, and we had them for making here, and we played the whole CD. They had their own party going over. She had to turn it up. I had to tell that story. Give the Lord a hand. Come on, amen. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Let me get you back lined up here. There you go. There you go. You got it now, Brenda? All right. The thing is, is we got, we can have a good time in the Lord. Amen. And the good news is, one of the guys that were a part of that group came up yesterday. And he knew he was a church group because Alan went down there and met him. <laughs> Alan was looking for food. That's all he was looking for. Nothing else. He said, they're cooking gum, gum, gumbo over there. And I've been over there looking around. <laughs> now, he met a guy by the name of Mike. And I ain't going to say his last name. He lives in Highfield, Arkansas. He was right here local with us. He came up, started talking to all of us guys yesterday at the end. And he said, I, I want to apologize if we were a little loud. And I said, well, it, it didn't bother us down here. But some of the ones like Brenda and Alan and Kim were across the street. 
And he goes, you know what? He said, we're sorry about that. And he said, you know what I want to do? I want to, because they always get the pavilion that we get. He said, I want your number so we can accommodate and work with each other. And we'll respect you on your dates and we'll come a later date. And I said, I, listen, listen here. He told Alan, said, I can't come to church because I got tattoos. I said, well, welcome to TPF. Come on, amen. We all have a tattoo. Or I don't, but, but Jeremiah might. But watch this. I'll help you. How many's got a tattoo? Raise your hand. Drummer, raise your hand. Well, there you go. Y'all tattooed heathen. No, I'm just kidding. But you know what I'm saying? People use the littlest thing why I can't go to church. And when you look around, it ain't got nothing to do with what you got on this body. It's what you got on the inside. Amen. How many glad he's inside you today? Hallelujah. Woo, I got to get out of here.